This time on Filmmaker. This project is supported in part by the National Endowment for the Arts, on the web at arts.gov, and by Oolite Arts, what Miami is made of. Hello, my name is Gabriel De Verona. I am the writer and director for Hurricane Flora. Hurricane Flora is a drama comedy about a Cuban-American family who get together during a hurricane to ride out the storm. I hope you enjoy my film. And this is a monster of a storm. It could be the strongest hurricane on Earth. Oje, 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 my people, DJ Malanga here bringing you an urgent hurricane update. Miami Beach is under mandatory evacuation, baby. You do not want to throw down with this one, mi gente. It will kill you. They might. Pour it up with your friends and family and let me provide the music for your hurricane parties. <laughs> I don't get how shooting your dad's interview during the hurricane is smart. People, it's not smart, okay? It's it's convenient. How is that convenient? Because he's not going to kick us out in the middle of a hurricane if I start digging into his prison story. Babe, slow down. I'm just saying, man threw half a papaya at me the last time. <laughs> oh, why are you laughing? <laughs> That hurt. I got a seat in my cornea. <laughs> You'll be fine, little baby. Just don't get political. I can't promise that. I keep it real. Don't get political. Still remodeling, huh? Yeah, it never ends. Let me get in there first, okay? Samantha! <laughs> Hi. I just had to sort of mandatorily evacuate the beach, so I thought. No, of course, of course, claro que sí, mi yeah. niña. Y mira a ver si hablas con tu padre, porque este hombre me va a matar a mí del corazón. Papi. Ayuda a tu mamá a llenar los garros de agua. Nice to see you too. You know it's been since like Christmas. Mm -hmm. ¿Y quién está ahí? Yeah. Okay. So I didn't come alone, and I was wondering if maybe Bert could crash with us too. Bert. Bert, Dad, but Bert, like the Muppet. Hello, welcome here. Todavía tú estás con el comandante este. Hola, señor Domingo. Yeah, nice to see you again. Ah, sí, señor Domingo. Oye, 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 cuidado, cuidado. Come on, he he doesn't have anywhere else to go. What would Jesus do? Jesus. Jesus, ¿tú estás oyendo lo que están diciendo aquí? Yo donde lo voy a mandar es para una habitación ahí en el en el motel princesa. Ahí donde va. Seriously, Dios, oh, no, no, no. Papi, qué asco. Por Dios, Ernesto, compórtate. But, ¿Qué asco, Nieto? Uh, our home is your home. Sí. Thank Gracias, you. Hey, don't worry, que yo la pide cucaracha, que tú sepas cucaracha. It's, it's, cucaracha. Dance, right? it's nothing. Just, can you put up the last couple windows yeah. for him, please? Yes, can you please help him? Deja que te ayude y no lo hagas más solo. Yeah, just go inside. Help us with the water. I, I can be your muscle, Senor Domingo. Have you ever bought up your, your home, you know, in the old-fashioned way? Have you? Uh, sí. Just go. Este tiene una clase de pizza arriba. Papi. Papi, está bien. Wow, uh, 
This is a pretty great event. And right now it's a category 5 hurricane. <coughs> Me robé una caja el otro día del hospital. Todas las noches le dejo una sobre la mesita. No pasa de la primera página. Samantha, ¿Mm? yo sé perfectamente lo que tú estás haciendo. ¿Mm? Y yo sé que quieres entrevistar a tu padre de nuevo. No, mi niña. Tú sabes que no. Pero tú sabes cómo es tu papá. Mira, ¿por qué tú no me dejas hablar con él primero y después tú lo entrevistas? ¿Ok? ¿Te animas un pedacito de pastel de pollo? <risa> claro. Mira lo desnutrida de que estás, muchacha. Yo no sé lo que estás comiendo. So, have you been back to Cuba since you left? Even if I could, why do I want to go back? Ah, uh, I don't know. I heard Fidel did some great things for Cuba. Yeah, right. Ten thousand souls can't tell you what that son of a bitch have done for them. Revolutions have casualties. Gord, what do you know about revolution, huh? I took a class in Latin American revolutions at NYU. Ah, ah, ah Senor Domingo, are you okay? Yeah, just finish the window, please. You're bleeding. Okay. ¿Y ahora qué te has hecho, Ernesto? Por Dios. Pero ven acá, mija. Así que tú le das pa' y pollo a tu hija y a mí no me das nada. What happened? Nothing. It was an accident. What? An accident? He cut himself. Este no sabe ni aguantar un pedazo de madera en la pared, chica. Mira, mira, mira lo que hizo. Mira, mira tu, a tu madre, mira, bostezando. I caught the wood before he really got hurt. Ah, no me diga, no me diga. ¿Qué quiere? ¿Un premio? ¿Eh? You might not respect my perspective. No, no. Tú no sabes un... Wait, I didn't know that. Hey, I went on a hunger strike for Paul the Gorilla, okay? Oh, no me diga. No me diga. Excuse me. I'm gonna change my camisa. Ay, mi vida, yo la verdad que no sé. Pero yo creo que aquí ha echado un mal de ojo tremendo. Good night, bird. Night. Why is she hungry? She's like force sensitive to negative energy. Get all our shit situated. I'll go talk to him. Alone. The cars are flipped. There's no windows left on those cars. No vamos a pensar ahora que todas las malas vibraciones aquí son del gringo. Por Dios, vamos, vamos a ser open mind, ¿ok? Pero si no son del gringo, ¿qué vamos a hacer entonces? A ver, acá bien. Sana, sana, culito de rana, si no sanas hoy. Sanarás mañana. El castigo ese me acuerda las cosas lindas que hemos pasado aquí. Ay, Ernesto, tú y tus cosas. Ernesto. ¿Eh? ¿Por qué no vas y hablas con tu hija? Ella está en su cuarto. No, eso no es, no es tan fácil. Ernesto, hazlo por ella. Hazlo por ti. ¿Mm? DJ Malanga still hear me, gente. I am in our hearing in Fruit Studio. Billy Records. What are you doing? I'm building camera. Can you go get the lights? Yeah. Before you get blown away? Quietly? Hang in there. Oh. Looks like the worst is yet to come. Let's send this metal track by Albie Silk out on the airwaves. Hopefully it's chill. Come in. Your hand okay? Well, I'm going to go a little bit, but... 
voy pasando. So, why haven't you turned this into like a bowling alley or something? <laughs> bueno, es tu cuarto, mía. Yeah. <laughs> How come you didn't tell me you were in the revolution? Never brought that up. Ever. Tienen que saber tu historia, papi. Pero pa' qué, mía? Para que después digan que yo estoy exagerando. Oh, that's the point. Le enseña. Por favor. Bueno, está bien. Pero yo voy a decir lo que yo quiera, ¿ok? No me presione. Of course I. I won't. Ok. Pero primero vamos a ver el episodio de 24, ¿ok? This bad boy. Oh, okay, Bobby, just say your name and occupation of the camera for me. Oh, uh, Neto Domingo. Owner of the Domingo Tires in Cayoche. Hey. It's okay. It's just you and me. What did you do for the revolution, Papi? Nosotros queríamos hacer bien. Batista había acabado con la clase trabajadora. What made you change your mind? Fidel. Bueno, Fidel no, los hombres de Fidel, que fueron los que le dispararon a mi hermano. Tío Tico. Didn't he die during the Mariel coming to the States? No, no. Lo cogieron y lo llevaron para un campo de homosexuales. Nosotros quería, cre, que creíamos en Fidel. Pensamos que él iba a cambiar todo. Pero resultó ser un autoritario y todo aquel que no encajaba con su idea absurda sencillamente lo eliminaba, lo, lo sacaba. Cuando yo me enteré de lo que le había pasado a mi hermano, pues lo fui a ver al campamento ese. What did you see? alineado bajo el sol, metido dentro de una celda chiquita, sin comida, sin agua, sin, sin baño, sin dignidad. Yo era su hermano mayor. Tenía que salvarlo. Pero lo... Sencillamente... Espérate, no, no. Eh, aquí hay algo que no está funcionando. Así no. No. What's wrong? Yo creo que aquí hay algo que no está funcionando. Why do you have to be like this? Tú lo que eres una malcriada. You, Dad. Oye, no le hables así a tu padre. Don't point at me. No me grites. Oh, sorry, you don't like getting yelled at. Maybe you shouldn't dish it out. ¿Tú sabes lo que te pasa a ti? Tú lo que quieres usarme a mí para tu that's not true. I care. I, I care, Dad. Mentira, mentira, mentira. Because people need to understand. People, ni people. Yo no tengo por qué explicarle a nadie todos los sacrificios que he pasado en mi vida. Because I need to understand.
That's the worst of it, mi gente. Tremendo force of nature, bro. I hope that you are all okay. Chilling with your mommies and poppies. DJ Malanga with you and the fam through the storm, baby. Let's go out with some movies or goodies. I know what goodie dumb means. ¿Cómo era Cuba? Cuando peleabas contra Batista. Cuba. Como país, la belleza, como siempre. El problema, mi amor, era que la gente estaba sufriendo. Kind of how we share our, our past traumas and if we want to, if we feel like it's right, if we need to, why do we need to? So all these kind of questions were kind of popping in my head and that's uh, kind of kind of the gist of it. It was a mixture of my cultural background and then this documentary kind of filmmaking background. I knew that it was going to be named after a hurricane since it is set during a hurricane. I figured that's the best title, Hurricane Something. So I started going through different hurricanes that hit Florida historically. I found out actually there was a hurricane Flora that hit Cuba a few years before the revolution kicked off, I believe, and it was like a really bad hurricane that kind of wiped out a lot of the island. I didn't go out of my way to find that title, but the title kind of worked somewhat metaphorically with the whole Cuban family background. Emotional, uh, personal, and I would like to think funny or, or at least truthful. The scene of, the, of uh, Sam and, and Ernesto doing the interview was a highlight because it was just, I had never really directed a, an emotional scene like that, especially one that has like, it's a very like subtle, change in it and then as far as uh just shooting wise like fun the a highlight part would have been shooting the hurricane uh, kind of going into the house sequences we had uh i rented uh, about like four high very high powered fans that would kind of shoot like 30 mile per hour supposedly 35 mile per hour winds at the actors every film that is great does have this in it is i would say authenticity you know it felt like what they were saying was authentic and to who they are and it came across clearly and people engage with it, I think that, that makes a film great. Hi, my name is Lauren McGarrett and I'm the director and writer of Mocktails from the Pub. Mocktails from the Pub is a short coming of age film about a young woman who works as a bartender, but soon comes to believe that her current position doesn't really serve the actual dreams that she has in her heart. I hope you enjoy the film. My name is Van, short for Vanessa but I just like Van. You ever think about the role your name plays in your life? Like a rose by any other name would smell as sweet sort of thing? My last name is Nebulous. Yeah, I know, right? Nebulous, like my nebulous future. I'm a mixologist. It's like a fancy word for bartender. At least that's what my boss says. The only difference being we don't have to interact with clientele much and spend a lot of time mixing drinks in the back. Which is good for me, since I'm not much of a conversationalist. Well, except with you. You're easy to talk to. So far. But working in a pub is also a little ironic, since I don't drink. I never got accustomed to the taste of alcohol. Except with beer. I love a good beer once in a while. So what am I, a non-indulgent introvert, doing here? Well, I don't even know. I want to be a writer, not for a newspaper or a website. A novelist, an artist. It's what I got my degree in, but instead I'm stuck here pouring fruity drinks. I just graduated from school. But it feels like my life's got no direction. I've spent years waiting for my life to begin, the day I write my breakout hit. Maybe that day's today. I want my stories to make people think. Stories like Stephen King and Mitch Albom. Or like Ben Curtis, who wrote my favorite book, You Drive Me Crazy. The kind you read and never forget. The ones that get better the more you think about them.
water, salt water, ocean, sea creatures. Sea creatures in the ocean plotting their revenge on humans. No. Family. A family on vacation. A family on vacation and nothing ever goes as planned. No. Space people. Space people in space. Doing spacey things. What if there was colonization in space? And the colonized decided to rebel against their oppressors? And that starts a war. A space war. N no, that's been done. But my greatest story just isn't coming to me. My life is void of inspiration. one magical idea to hit you, but have you ever thought that maybe your idea is staring you in the face? I used to work at a grocery store, and I absolutely hated it. Stocking shelves, ringing out rude customers, cleaning up baby vomit from the shopping carts. But the thing is, those experiences that I thought were so negative back then would serve as the tools for my first bestseller. Creatives get in the mindset of thinking that their careers will take off when they do their first great project. That's not true. Your career starts the moment that you decide that you want to become a writer. So draw from what you have around you in this chapter of your life. Maybe it'll take you into the next. My name's Van, and I'm a mixologist. It's not my first choice job, but it does pay the bills. I guess it's kind of cool when you think about it. It's like I'm an alchemist in a fantasy game and I create the elixirs for your adventures. Wait, alchemist? The story of an alchemist who creates potions in another world. Now this, this is amazing. its theme with being a creative working another job that probably doesn't really match up to what your goals are. That comes from my own life as a creative person and what I feel many um, people who work in artistic cre uh, careers often go through when they're working a second job. My main character doesn't drink alcohol but she works as a mixologist mixed in with like kind of like tales from the crypt or something like a play on words like that. My production team and actors came together in uh, a very quick way. Uh, they're, the main actors are my siblings and the only crew was my husband. The pub was actually just my mom's house in her kitchen. It was kind of all put together very quickly but I'm very happy with the way everything turned out. When you finally feel satisfied with it as the filmmaker, and um, that can be after, you know, the second draft, it can be after the 15th draft. Um, the story isn't finished until you feel that it speaks to you. To be a filmmaker, you just have to get started creating your film. And it doesn't matter if you're using your phone or a million dollar, or a million dollar camera or anything, it's just about taking that first step to bringing your film to life, like that's what makes you a filmmaker. This project is supported in part by the National Endowment for the Arts, on the web at arts.gov, and by Oolite Arts, what Miami is made of.